Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I do hope you're staying safe and healthy out there. I'm having fun in Luminar 4 today. And by the way, if you're new here, my name is Jim. Nice to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here on YouTube showing how to use different software products to edit your images, do creative things, and frankly, have fun. As I said, I'm in Luminar 4 today. And before I show you the image, I want to tell you about a couple of special offers. I, um, you know, I talk to the Skyloom people quite a bit. I love Luminar. It's obviously like my favorite product of all time. And they said, hey, would you be willing to like offer up a special offer to your viewers? And I said, of course. So there's basically three different offers going on. I'll put links to them down below if you wanna check them out. The first one is you can get Illuminar, which is regular uh, price of $89. You can get it for $64. Uh, so it's basically $25 off, great deal. Like I said, I'll put the uh, link down below. The second offer is you can get Luminar 4 with two sky packs. One is called Enchanting Twilight, and the other one is called The Power of Nature. And in total, if you bought Luminar and these two sky packs, it would cost $143, but the special offer gets you the Luminar product and the two sky packs for $89, which is really just the original cost of Luminar, which is also a great deal. And I'll show you the sky packs in a second. And then third, they gave me a promo code that's just for the sky packs. Many of you may have Luminar already and you want the sky packs. And so with this promo called, uh, code, it's Easy Sky Replacement 10, I'll put it there. Um, that gives you $10 off any sky pack. So let me pop over here. Here's the Luminar Marketplace. You can come over here and just pick any of these, um, uh, these sky packs, like maybe you want to get this Power of Nature, which is amazing. Um, I do have it. You just click on Enter Promotional co Code, enter that code, which is Easy Sky Replacement 10, hit Apply, and you can see you get $10 off. So um, I don't know when these promo codes expire. As soon as I find out, I'll put that down below as well. But I wanted to make you aware of that. I also wanted to show you some of the uh, skies that are included in these sky packs. So the Enchanting Twilight has these amazing and beautiful uh, Twilight photos, right? So let me show you some of these. I'm just kind of clicking, like that's gorgeous. Um, I like some of these, it got some great color in it. And you know, some of these, I've, I've thought about this a lot because I do a lot of sky replacement for fun. And um, sometimes I've looked at these and thought, well, the whole sky isn't dramatic, like in this one, it's just that bottom half. But the truth is, how many times are you using the entire sky? Like for me, the sky is usually like a third of the image maybe it may be a half. And so uh, something like that actually works really well. Um, so, you know, here's some of those examples and, and these are just beautiful soft twilight, uh, you know, with some nice color. Now, Power of Nature is very different as the name implies. It's very dramatic. If you look at this, like, let me show you this one big. I mean, there you go. That, that's crazy. That is just beautiful. So when I got this uh, pack, I was just kind of like, woohoo. Um, I'm gonna use this one in my photo today. Let me show you this. There you go, I mean, look at that. It's like a shelf cloud and this lightning coming down. It's pretty amazing stuff. So there's all kinds of these dramatic skies here in this uh, Storm uh, Power of Nature pack. I should go, I mean, look at that. These are just crazy good. So I'm gonna close these. I'm gonna jump over to Illuminar and let me show you the photo that I started with. Okay, here's the photo I started with. It was uh, basically past sunset in Florence, Italy. I was up on the hill overlooking this beautiful town and the Duomo and all that stuff. And if you've been, you've probably taken this shot as well. And of course, I was disappointed because there was no sunset. There was no light, there was no clouds, there was nothing. But with a little bit of fun in Illuminar, I turned it into that. Very different, I used one of those amazing storm skies from the Power of Nature pack. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset these filters. I'm gonna walk through how I got from that photo to this photo. Okay, here we are in Boring Town. Uh, this is the, uh, the base photo. You can see no edits made. So the first thing I did, I go to the Creative tab. If I know I'm gonna replace this sky, I always do that first. I prefer to get the new sky in, and then I know what my new base photo looks like, which is the new sky in the existing foreground. And that gives me, kind of informs my process as I go through my edits, because I've got the new sky and the, and the uh, existing foreground, and now that they're perfectly blended, thanks to this amazing tool, I can just kind of go through, keep that in mind, and it allows me to better balance the light and the color and things like that. So I'm gonna just turn that on. I use that Stormy Sky 4, and uh, you can see I did a few changes here, right? I moved the horizon position. That's something that I use all the time. As I said at the beginning of this video, sometimes there's just a piece of the sky that you need. Like in this case, that's, 
you know, maybe not quite a third of the frame. And I wanted to get a little bit of that cloud and I definitely wanted those lightning bolts in there. So moving that horizon position really helps. Um, I used a little bit of closed gaps in Sky Local to get it to blend more perfectly along the edge there. And I think it did a, a, you know, a really good job. And then I also took the temperature slightly down and took the exposure down. And I love that those sliders are in the Sky Replacement Tool because I, I pretty much use them every time. And that goes back to what I'm talking about is balancing the light is I want to get the light in the new sky to kind of match up with the light that's in the existing foreground. Now, having said that, you can see, um, if you remember my final photo, the foreground here is, is really dark. And in my final photo, I brighten it quite a bit. And I'll show you how I do that. But part of this was I wanted to darken the sky a little bit because I felt like it was a little too bright even for you know, knowing what I was going to do to brighten the foreground in future uh, moves. So anyway, sky replacement basically went from that to that. I think I got a nice looking sky. I'm going to pop over here to light. And that's usually my next move. After I put this sky, then I go to the essentials tab and I start going through the different filters most of the time. Every now and then I might alter that a little bit, but probably 90 plus percent of the time after I put in the sky, I go over here to light and then, you know, start working my way through. I need to look at what I did here. I take the, uh, took the temperature down like a negative 33. So something about like that. And I added tint of about eight. So let me do that. So here we go. Let me get to 33. There we go. Uh, next was smart contrast. I went to about 31 there. There's that. And highlights are coming down negative 26 and shadows are going up by a positive 46. So you can see that's already made a nice difference. But of course, I want to make it brighter. And you know, not only is it still too dark, but some of the colors I don't really like, and I don't think it really goes together. And uh, anyway, I'm going to finish uh, or keep working on this. Okay, I skip AI Enhance, although I love the tool and I use it a lot. I went straight to AI Structure. And in this case, I put a negative amount of structure in the sky. I just wanted to soften up that detail. So let me show you. There's the mask. I basically took a gradient mask, dropped it into the sky, and just blended that in. And all I did was just kind of smooth out some of that. So that before, you can see a little bit more structure, if you will, in the clouds. And then after, I just kind of soften it up. Simply a personal preference. I just like kind of smoother skies. A little bit of that long exposure kind of feel. Uh, just something I like to do. Uh, and next I was on to color and here we go. I bumped up the vibrance a little bit and then down here below the yellow saturation. I took that down by about a negative 20. So let me show you the before. There it is without anything. And then after it's not a huge difference. It's kind of minor and I'm going to do a bit more work on that. But some of the yellows and the golds were a little too dominant for me and I just kind of wanted to get them under control. So this was step one in that process. Now, having said that, I pop over to Landscape Enhancer and I give it a 25 on golden hour. And remember, all these edits are applying across the whole photo. So I basically went and decreased the yellow saturation and then adding Landscape Enhancer or technically golden hour on the Landscape Enhancer uh, toolkit there. Basically kind of, uh, it's not exactly uh, reverse that, but it definitely brought back some of those warmer tones. But it also had a nice little pop in the sky. There's the before and the after and I like that look in the sky. So again, I'm going to come back and do some more fixing on that here in a moment. Okay, now I'm going back to the um, creative tab and here I'm going to get glow. I like this tool quite a bit and I give it a small amount. It's a 10 and I use soft focus bright. All it kind of does is kind of take the brighter parts and it pops them a little bit. So let me show you one more time. If you look, especially in that upper left corner of the sky, there's the before and the after. Actually, it kind of extends all across this section of the sky. Basically, that's where the lightning is. It's kind of bright already. I expect it, especially since there's three bolts kind of cracking at sunset. I mean, again, I'm faking this. I didn't see this, but that's the way the photo looks, right? So you get these three bolts of lightning cracking at sunset where there's still a fair amount of light in the sky. I just felt like hitting those highlight areas with a little bit brighter look is, uh, is, is kind of helps. And so that's what really soft focus bright did for me in this one. Let me show you one more time before and after just a little bit of pop in the sky. And now I'm popping over here to the adjustable gradient tool on the professional tab. Let me turn that on. Let me show you my orientation. I moved it basically to where the orientation is level with kind of the horizon uh, of the skyline, not the mountains, but this center line is basically 
uh, level with the uh, where the city ends and the hills start, right? Now, if you look at top, I didn't do anything there, but bottom, I did quite a bit. I brightened the exposure significantly. I mean, I went to 97, added some contrast, lifted the shadows, and then actually cooled it off a little bit. And part of that, now it adds a lot of blue here. I'm gonna fix that. But um, I, uh, I sort of, I feel like it did a little bit better job on the yellows down below. So there's the before and the after. I think the yellows look a little bit better. They're brighter and I like the color better because I've kind of cooled them off. But of course, that caused everything else to be kind of blue and we're gonna work on that here in a minute. But those are my moves. Let me check my notes. Yeah, those are all my moves on this layer. So we've got, a, you know, I think a pretty good start. There's the before and there's the after. I like it, but you know, some of the colors are off and some of the saturation is wrong. So this is where I add a new adjustment layer. And so I'm gonna go to my adjustment layer one. I'm gonna turn that on and come over here. Uh, the first thing I do is go into color. And let me turn that on. And this was simply controlling the blue. So I didn't do anything above the fold in advanced settings. If you click on blue, I took the saturation down quite a bit. And then of course I painted it in with the brush. Let me show you that. Uh, there you go. I basically painted across the hills and the city and then down below where there was a lot of blue as well. Um, I honestly probably, instead of painting it, I probably could have just, not probably, I could have taken a gradient mask and just dropped it all the way down that way. I just started painting because um, the reason uh, I did it this way is I started painting these buildings and then I was like, oh, you know what? I kind of need to paint the hills. And then I was like, oh, I kind of need to paint these. So I ended up painting a bunch of sections, except for that right in the middle, whereas I could have taken the adjust, or excuse me, the gradient mass tool and just wiped it across the bottom and done the same thing, but quicker. So I just wanted to point out that uh, my moves worked for me, but this in this case, that move was kind of a little bit slower than using just a gradient mask because there's no blue here. Um, so I ended up painting around it, but because there's no blue there, the negative blue is not gonna affect it. So gradient mask on the whole bottom two thirds would have been just fine. Hope that makes sense. Um, after color, I went to details. And here I did use the mask, uh, the brush mask, I should say, because I wanted to pop a little bit of detail. So I go into edit mask. I'm gonna click on brush. Let me show you if I can find that. There we go. You can kind of see what I did. I just painted across the buildings in the foreground and a little bit of the dome and the two towers. What I don't want is detail in the sky. Um, there's no point besides I removed, you know, with a negative structure on the first layer, I removed that anyway. Um, there's no reason to put detail in these hills because they look fine like that and you're not seeing anything. Uh, and then down here, I'm gonna end up darkening that anyway. There's no point in adding detail there. So just a careful brush just allows you to paint detail basically into the man-made structures in the center of the frame. And I think they got a nice little crispy pop. It's a 19 on small details, 34 on medium. And uh, I've been asked this a few times, why small or medium versus large? It's just experimentation. The small stuff, if you do that a lot, you will get a really, really finely detailed and crispy looking image that looks like a HDR from about 10 years ago. So I use small sparingly. I tend to go with medium. Because I don't know, I just, this is very unscientific, but I just kind of assume uh, there's probably more medium detail than there is anything else. I know the small detail looks really crunchy if I'm not careful, and large detail, often I use it and I don't see a huge difference. So I tend to start with medium and then sometimes maybe add small or large if I feel like it helps visually. So let me look here. Yeah, that's it for this layer. So this layer has helped us quite a bit, I think. Let me turn that off. There's before this layer, and you can see, quite a bit more blue and less detail. And then after, more detail in these city, um, you know, all these man-made structures and of course, a lot less blue. So that was controlling it, the color and the detail with the brush mask. Okay, now we're on to adjustment layer two. And this is my final adjustment layer where I kind of do my fine tuning uh, and, and I'll call them last, uh, last edits for lack of a better word. So I'm gonna start with the light tool. And here, I took a 10 to 20. And by the way, um, I'm gonna hit reset on that. I don't know if you knew this, but you can just click here and I should probably do this in videos and just type in the number you want and then hit enter and it'll move it. I tend to slide it and then I can never get it exactly right. I should probably just type it in. If you didn't know that, you can do that. This is again, a global adjustment, no masking needed or wanted here. I just wanted to add a little bit of that, kind of that twilight pinkish tint to the photo simply because I like it and I feel like it plays well with some of the color in these clouds. 
Speaking of color, that's the next thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over here to color. Let me turn that on. And the first thing I did is I go to blue and I bring the saturation down negative 30. And um, again, I'm uh, not again, I haven't said this yet. Um, on this layer, I'm, or, I'm sorry, on this tool, the color tool, I put a gradient mask in place. Let me show you where that is. So you can kind of see where this is applying. It's basically the bottom, let's call it the bottom half of the photo. And that's where these color adjustments are gonna occur. So the first thing I did is go into blue and I took saturation down about negative 30. And then I went to yellow and you can see I made some shifts here. I changed the hue and I reduced the saturation but I increased luminance. So if you look at the yellow, which is a lot of these buildings, I basically changed the hue to make it a little more kind of orangey. Um, and then I took the saturation down and then I brightened them by bringing up the luminance. So let me show you that one more time. There you go, there's before and then after. It's a, it's not a major difference. Um, it's it's slightly noticeable, but I just thought it looked a little bit better. So I went with it in that, uh, in that way. And then my final move to uh, finish this photo is once again with the adjustable gradient tool. And all I did here is, let me show you my orientation. If you look, I just dragged it down here. I basically tilted it and moved it so that this gradient is basically following the line of the river and kind of along the rooftop and the treetop and the bottom of the photo. And then what I did is I went to bottom and I took exposure down negative 100. I just wanted to darken that area because I don't really care for the viewer to spend any time at all looking at that. I want them to be drawn to the Duomo and the cityscape with that amazing sky. Uh, and then I warmed it up simply because I felt like it was a little bit blue. So if you look down here before, it's a little bit brighter and a little bit bluer. And then after this tool, it's darker and the warmth uh, basically removes some of the blue. It's not a whole lot of warmth, so it's not distracting, but it's taking away some of that blue. And again, I think the blue, um, really any massive amount of color down there would be kind of distracting. So I wanted to kind of overcome that blue by making it warmer. And that's my whole edit, my friends. So sky replacement of the base layer with a number of filters, an adjustment layer for detail and color being very specific, and then a final touch-up adjustment layer just to make everything sort of come together and fit together. So there it is. There's the before and the after. And here is a sliding um, window, whatever you call it, the before and after sliding look. And you can see quite a lot of detail and visibility because of the light changes in that center of the photo. Obviously a very different sky. And then a number of color changes and temperature and tint kind of work to sort of get the overall mood and feel looking better. And I like this photo quite a bit. A lot of it is due to that power of nature sky pack, which you can get. As I said, I'll put links down below for these offers. And that's it for today, my friends. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll be back really soon. One more time. I love doing the before and after. Can you tell? I do that at the end of every video. I do it like three or four times. I'm like, look, there's before and there's after. Wow. Um, but I do get excited. It's a lot of change. And that's the power of Luminar. So I love it. Hope you're having fun. I hope you're staying safe, most importantly. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, right? Follow along and I'll be back soon with more, uh, I was gonna say adventures. This was an adventure from a few years ago, but I'll be back with more videos and we'll be talking, my friends. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take care and adios.